Uh, let me introduce Matt Chaff. He is coming to us today from just outside of London. Uh, he's contributed to projects such as CanJS and Feathers.js. And most recently, he wrote the migration tools for CanJS 6. The tools include code mods that automate the upgrade process. And in his talk, Matt's going to explain the basics of code mods and what tools are available to make dealing with them easier so you can build your own. Thanks, Jason. I've been working on code mods for the CanJS 6 migration tools which allow for automatic upgrade of your legacy CanJS projects to the latest versions. We use JS CodeShift for running these JavaScript code mods. Code mods are awesome because they simplify repetitive programming tasks, allow for complex transformations, and make library upgrades easier. Now, what is JS CodeShift? JS CodeShift is a tool by Facebook for running code mods on JavaScript. JS CodeShift uses Recast, which is an AST transformation tool. Now, what is an AST? AST stands for Abstract Syntax Tree. Um, this means an abstract representation of your code, abstract being the structural content of your code, either the code without any formatting, brackets, semicolons, uh, and a tree-like structure, um, as we can see here in this example on the screen. AST Explorer is an online tool for exploring JavaScript ASTs. Um, I use this to write most of the CanJS 6 code mods. Uh, Paste in the code that I'd like to transform. I'll use the tree view um, to navigate the tree to see what I'd need to target for the transformation. And I'll create, create the transform in the browser where I'll be able to see the expected output. In the following slides, I'll walk through the different sections of the AST Explorer. So in the top left, we've got the input section where you paste your code in that you'd want to inspect. On the top right, we have the tree view. Um, so you can navigate the tree uh, and see what sections you have. At uh, the bottom left, we've got the transformation section where you can write your transform function. Um, and on the bottom right is where you would see the output of the transformation. In this example, this is reversing all of the letters. So in this example, um, I've zoomed in in the top two sections. So on the right hand side, you've got the tree view and hovering over one of the, uh, the expression statement, we can see it's highlighting the, the code snippet on the left hand side in the code panel. Um, and if I just switch to the AST Explorer, we can see this in action. So we can see by hovering over different sections of the body, it highlights the, the corresponding code in the code panel on the left. And by opening that up, we can see what they mean, the name of these, and just hovering over them gives us a good example of those. Um, I'm just going to go through an example of one of the transforms for CanJS 6. This example, I'm going to be transforming a CanJS 5 component into CanJS 6. Um, so on the left, we've got the CanJS 5 component, which you would Call the component.extend to create a component. You'd give it a tag name um, and a view property for the template. And on the right hand side, we've got the canjs 6 um, where you would extend the stash element class um, and then use a static getter for the template. Um, so this is an example of the transform. Um, I've cut a bit out because it's quite large. Um, so this is what was used to, to transform from CanJS 5 to CanJS 6. Um, so we'll just run through a few of the bits. So JS CodeShift exposes a set of APIs that allow you to navigate the tree to find and transform, to transform it. Um, so here we've got the find method, which um, we're then passing in what we're going to look for. So we're looking for a call expression. Um, and then we can set how we expect to find stuff. So we're going to set the callee, and we're going to look for a member expression, we're going to look for an object name of component and a property name of extend. So this find is going to find that component.extend on the left. Then we're going to iterate over the properties of the object. We're going to pull out the, um, the view and the tag properties as we'll need those for later. And then we're going to determine how the component 
was used, uh, whether it was declared as a variable, whether it was an export or just a, a component. We need this so we can determine how we're going to replace the component. Then we're going to Pascal case the tag name depending on how it was used, or rather use the tag, um, or we'll use the, the variable name. And then we've got a replace. So we're going to replace the entire component. We're going to create a class declaration. We're going to give it an identifier, which will be the class name. We'll create a class body, which will just have a single method in it. It's going to be a static getter with the name of view. And then we'll create a body for that. And that will be the value of the view property. Uh, and then finally, we'll set the class extend name, which will be slash element in this case. Uh, and here is the CanJS5 component on the left and then what we extended to. And if we just open up the AST Explorer, we can see that in action. Um, so up here, we've got we want to transform, so this is the CanJS5 component. And we've got the bottom left, we've got the whole transformation down here. And then this is it with the output. So it's just some links here. So we've got the links to the JS Code Shift, links to AST Explorer, and then some links to Can Migrate and Migration Tools. Any questions? I have a question. How long does it typically take to write a code mod like that? Um, now that you understand the tools. Now that I understand the tools? Yeah. Um, I guess it depends on the complexity of what you're transforming. Um, that probably took a good four or five hours, I'd say, maybe, to do that one. I guess that was one of the first ones I did. Um, but I guess depending on the complexity of the transform a few hours. OK. I was just curious, because it's probably saved us like hundreds of hours of doing that manually. So it's a huge, huge benefit. Yeah, it can, uh, it can save a lot of time, yeah. especially if you've got lots of things to run it on. I guess we, we run it on the docs, which was uh, a huge time saver. Right.